As you're beginning your home search to Colorado, one of the first things you might be asking yourself is, what does affordability look like if I were to move to the state? What do home prices look like and where can I find the best deals? Well, in this video, we are going to go over just that. We're gonna start off giving you guys an overview in terms of just average home prices all over the Denver metro area. And I mean, from all the way up north to all the way down south. And then we'll dive into the specific neighborhoods where you can find the most affordable homes. Let's dive right into it. Now, before we jump over to the map and really start diving into these specific neighborhoods, let's talk about affordability overall. So right now we are looking at average home prices right around $560,000. Now that covers the entire Denver metro area. That's also going to encompass everything from condos, to single family homes. Now for the sake of this video, we are going to talk primarily to single family homes because that's what the majority of you guys are looking for when you move out here. But keep in mind that there are plenty of options and some really good options for condos and townhomes. Now to give you guys an overview, just in general, as far as sort of the entry level price point that we'll see here in Colorado for good single family homes that are in areas that don't feel like Kansas, right? Because the homes do get a lot cheaper as you go out east literally towards Kansas, you're going to be in that five to $600,000 range. Now it can be difficult to find something under that $500,000 range, unless you really are willing to go pretty far out east into the plains or maybe really far down south or really far up north. But generally speaking, starting in Denver and kind of working your way out, it is going to get less expensive as you go north, south, or east. Why did I leave west off of there? Because the west is the Rocky Mountains. And in Colorado, it was founded during the gold rush, which means they started out west and then built their way out east. So west, we're obviously stuck by the mountains. We can't keep developing out into the mountains. We call that, you know, almost like the beachfront, right? Like beachfront living to where, man, it's nice being close to the mountains, but you can't keep building into it, right? Until you're actually doing real mountain living. But we have tons of space out east. If any of you guys have flown into Colorado before and you land at Denver International Airport, you're gonna notice that, man, there's not a whole lot of mountains around, right? You're kind of sitting out in the plains and and that area is so undeveloped right now, so there is a lot of opportunity for growth out there. But if you're looking at Denver and about a 45 minute radius going outside of it, that's the area that we're going to focus on today because that's where the majority of our housing is. So let's jump over to the map here, or specifically the MLS, and let's start diving into some specific prices in some specific areas and see where we can find you guys the best deals. Okay, now here I am in the MLS. This is what us realtors see on the back end as we are building out home searches for you guys. And I have some filters put in here that I wanna go over with you first. To start off, I wanted to find areas that had homes at or below our average home price. So here I put in our price filter as 600 or under. I put that it's a single family residence. And I did put in a year built filter of 2015 plus just to give you guys a real good idea of the communities. If we're looking at older homes, right, you can definitely find these homes that are in Denver that are under five or $600,000. But those are going to be really old homes that could potentially need a lot of updates. A lot of you guys, you are looking for these neighborhoods and communities and homes that aren't going to need a lot of work to get them up to speed for you to save us some of those homes and areas, I am putting this filter in here so that we can focus on the best of the best. Now, I did also put in here a two-car garage filter. Garages are going to be very common here in Colorado. You're definitely going to want a two-car garage if possible. And what I pull is that, you know, a two-car garage in Colorado easily becomes a one-car and a three-car becomes a two-car. By the time you put a snowblower in there, some bikes, some fun Colorado toys, you're going to end up using one of those bays. So I always like putting two-car as our minimum. Now, what I'm going to do from here, guys, is I'm going to jump over to the map because I want to see just based off of these simple filters. Keep in mind, I haven't put any city filters in here yet. I want to see what parts of Colorado we're finding the biggest concentrations of these homes in. I want to interrupt here real quick to let you guys know we put together the ultimate Colorado relocation guide, which you can find down in the description below. When you download that guide, it is 40 pages of really, really good to know information about moving to Colorado. We cover everything from the best school districts to the best cities to move to, to the best places to go eat, the best things to do. So if you haven't done so yet, download that guide and let's get right back to the content. 
All right, so right now we are looking at the entire Denver metro area and then some. But let's start off just kind of giving you an overview of the map overall. So up here, you're gonna see a big concentration, the biggest concentration of 782 homes that are up here on the north side. Now, as I zoom in just a little bit, you'll start seeing this start to expand. So this is going to cover everywhere from Longmont up north as we get closer to Loveland, as we continue up north and we start going through Windsor all the way up to Fort Collins. We're not gonna cover all of these areas today because there is way too much to dive into for one video. The lesson that we're learning here is that, hey, this Northern Colorado stretch, let's call it between Denver and Fort Collins, has a ton of affordability when it comes to these newer style homes. Now we will dive into some more of these specifically, but let's keep checking out the whole map for now. As we start working our way down south, you're also going to see much closer to Denver, another big concentration of homes here in the immediate north northeast side of Denver here. And as I zoom in here, you're going to see that that includes places like Commerce City, Reunion that has a ton of homes. And then down here, as we get into Green Valley Ranch, and for a little bit of perspective right here, this is the Denver International Airport. So right around the airport here, you are seeing quite a bit of new developments that are popping up of very affordable homes. As I work my way down south a little bit more, now we are here on the East Aurora side. We'll dive into some of these neighborhoods specifically, but just to give you a good overview, we're sitting right here off of I-70, which is our primary east-west highway on the north side. This is a highway that will take you all the way to Kansas or all the way to the mountains. So it is a very, very handy highway to live by, and you're starting to see a lot of new opportunities pop up there as well. Now, if I zoom out as I-70 continues down east, you're going to see more concentrations of homes out here. Honestly, guys, once you get out of this immediate vicinity of the airport and start heading further east, it's not even really going to feel like you live in Colorado anymore. It is just straight up open plains and it feels very much like Kansas. You are starting to see some more uh, communities pop up out here, but if you're looking to move to Colorado, we honestly just don't have a lot of clients that are looking to move that far out east. Now, as the state continues to grow and develop, you're probably going to start seeing more and more people choose to live out there. You're going to see much greater affordability and these might just be people that want to live in Colorado. Maybe they don't need to be super close to the mountains or super close to the city. And you know, if you guys are looking at places like Texas, for example, people live all over Texas. It's not uncommon to drive an hour or two hours to get to where you're going. One of the great things about Colorado is the way we're developed is again, you've got like Denver in the middle and then you go 45 minutes to an hour outside of that and you're hitting all the major metro cities. As the city continues to grow though, I do think you will start to see more and more communities pop up out to the east and you'll see more people wanting to live out there. Maybe they're fine living in their little town. If they want to drive an hour to Denver, they can. But for now, you're just not going to find a whole ton of things out there. All right, back at the map now, as we continue to work our way down south, now we're starting to get into the areas of like Parker and Castle Rock. You're starting to see less and less of these big concentrations of affordable homes, but there are still plenty down here. Let me come back out, look at the map overall and what you will see here, guys, let's talk about where there's not homes right here in Denver. This is the heart of the Denver metro area. Let me pop open my handy dandy marker. And right here where we've got Denver, our main metro cities are primarily going to be Denver, Lakewood, Littleton, Highlands Ranch, Centennial, Aurora. Here you've got Thornton and Westminster. And then I would even bring this down as far as Parker and Castle Pines. These are going to be the primary cities in the Denver metro area. And as you can see, with the exception of Castle Rock down here, man, there's not a whole ton of affordability. Okay, so this ties in perfectly to what I was saying earlier in the sense of if you're looking out west here, there's almost nothing with the exception of down here in Roxboro Park. And same with Denver, but then more and more as we get out east. Also keep in mind that I do have this year built filter on here. So part of the reasons that we're not seeing a whole ton over here on the west side is because, like I said earlier, this was developed first. So with that 2015 and newer year filter, that's part of the reason that we're not seeing homes out here. So if you're really wanting to live close to Denver, don't freak out and think that you can't find anything under 600,000 because you definitely can. It's just going to be an older style of home that may 
need some updates. So if you're good with that, you can definitely find some availability out there. But for this video, we're gonna focus on some of the newer communities only. Now I wanna start off up north here. I don't quite wanna go as far north as Fort Collins. Reason being is that Fort Collins is almost like a little island of its own. If you live in Fort Collins, you're generally not coming down to the Denver metro area on a regular basis. It's kind of like if you live in Denver going to Colorado Springs. You know, it's an hour and a half to two hours away depending on traffic. It's not something that you're gonna wanna do every day. So Fort Collins is the same to Denver as Denver is to Colorado Springs. For those of you guys that are calling us, a lot of you guys, we do cover Fort Collins, but a lot of you guys are wanting to stay closer to the metro area. So we're gonna start off just a little bit further down south in this small town and area here called Berthoud. Berthoud is really unique in the sense of it used to just be farmers only, very rural sort of small city. And it is still a small city, but it is continuing to develop. But one of the very unique things about Berthoud is that it is home to a TPC golf course, which I think is like one of less than 10 in the country. That is absolutely stunning. We've got some clients that are actually purchasing a home out there right now. But let's dive into Google Earth to show you guys just a little bit about Berthoud is going to look like if you guys were to live down there. As you guys can see around here, as the globe is spinning, you're going to see all of the agricultural fields and farmlands that they have here. What you're also going to notice are a lot of little lakes and bodies of water. And then you've got the town of Berthoud that is sitting right here in the middle. Again, you're going to notice that, man, this is just tiny and rural feeling. Man, that's a hard word to say. However, you know, once you go up north here in Colorado, you can really see just the clear view of the mountains and this is absolutely gorgeous. This is a really good blend of a small town feel with a lot of future growth potential. Okay, I think that's one of the biggest factors when it comes to Berthoud is, you know, as you're seeing these new homes that are popping up out here, man, the city's only to continue to grow. So if we come back here to the MLS, I want to show you guys just a couple, you know, real life listings of what you might be able to find out there. And as you guys can see, there's like one little neighborhood. Again, the city overall is pretty small but you've got this pocket out here where they're doing some new builds. Let's just take a look and see at what, you know, one of these looks like. Here is a home that listed at 457. That's about 2000 square feet. It does have a small basement, 500 square feet. This is obviously a new build. They've got that modern style and look going for it. Let me click through here at just a couple of them. You see like there's no landscaping quite yet. And it does have that sort of, this is a two story, but a lot of these will have some of that, like that three story design. Some of these will even have a nice little rooftop patio which overlooks the mountains not a ton of square footage but nice finishes and again very affordable let's take a look at just one more here in the area and see if it's something similar yep here we go so 460,000, which for a brand new home in colorado is going to be a very very good price for you 2,000 square feet again small basement let's take a little look here And you will find, I was looking for the garage here for a second ago, but it looks like there is the two car garage in the back. And again, nice finishes inside, small-ish square footage. But man, this gets you in birth at under 500,000, which is crazy. And on top of that, this is a new build and a lot of builders right now are having really, really good interest rate incentives. So this could be a great opportunity if you don't need a whole ton of square footage. It's two, still 2,000 square feet, so it's not the smallest thing in the world. Man, for a brand new home at 460,000 with good interest rate incentives, that is a really, really good deal. Coming back to the map here, here's Berthoud. We're gonna come over to I-25, this highway right in the middle. This is our primary north-south highway. This is something you're gonna be taking probably every day, no matter where you live in Colorado. So as we come down south, we are heading towards Denver now. We're going to pass this little area called Firestone. Now, Firestone is a cool spot because you are significantly closer to Denver. Firestone, it just has a really cool new feel to it. There's a lot of restaurants and stuff that are up there. It is an ever-growing community. Now, as I hover over some of the prices here, we're going to see 575, 586, 569. So our prices are going up a little bit, but let's take a look at the homes and see how that actually translates into size and quality of finish. Now with this home here, they're, again, they're listed at 569. They've already dropped at 10 grand. This is built in 2020. We're at 2,800 square feet with a 934 square foot basement. So we're definitely getting more square footage here. 
and beautiful home, beautiful yard. We've got that nice two car garage in front. Let's click through and just look at some of the photos here. Okay, so in my opinion, much better layouts, much more practical, finishes look awesome here. And again, this is a 2020 build, so you're looking at almost a new home. Let's keep clicking through. I like, you know, these homes that aren't brand new from a builder. One of the bonuses, guys, is, you know, you'll have these little updates that homeowners have done that really make it feel more like a home instead of kind of fresh off the conveyor belt. But man, this is a really cute house. It's in a really cute community. I really like this one. And for under 600,000 in a really cute town like Firestone, man, this is a great deal. Like beautiful primary bath that you've got here. Yeah, this is a great home. Let's jump over to Google Earth here. I wanna take you guys to Firestone to see what exactly that looks like. All right, here we go. So we just went down south a little bit and we are sitting here on the east side of the highway. 360 view. And I'm gonna spin you around here so that you guys can see what it's gonna look like facing the mountains. So again, you're a little bit further away from the mountains because we are going you know, out to the east side. But you guys can see here that, again, the neighborhoods are much more developed. So let's jump down to street view and I wanna take a look here. Just kind of drive around so you guys can get a feel for it. Man, these lots look like they're actually like pretty decently sized. New homes, the neighborhoods look really nice. You've got your cul-de-sacs. A lot of these are going to back to open space as well. And guys, this feels almost like a Castle Rock neighborhood where you have these, you know, nice master plan communities. A lot of these homes have three car garages. They're really good size. You can also see that there's a decent amount of space between the homes, not a ton, but it's definitely not one of those neighborhoods where you feel like you could just reach out and touch your, touch your neighbor. Let's keep going here. There we go, this guy's got a nice big corner lot. For mid fives, man, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal neighborhood here. And again, when you're talking future growth potential, there's room to grow up there. You guys can see Firestone, again, this you know fairly small city here, but all around this is just farm and agriculture, so it's only going to continue to grow, which only means more appreciation for you. Now, one of the other things I love about Firestone is your proximity to I-25. So even if you are working here in Denver, man, this isn't a terrible drive. You're jumping on the highway, you're coming straight down south, and then this is going to pop you right into downtown. If you're looking for new build and affordability while still not having a terrible drive to Denver, this could be a really good option for you. All right, now as we come down I-25, I wanna come over here a little bit further east of Firestone here in the Reunion neighborhood. Now Reunion technically is part of Commerce City, but it does not feel like Commerce City. Commerce City guys used to be just all industrial, factories and things like that. They started building these communities like Reunion where you're gonna find neighborhoods very similar to what we just saw in Firestone. So diving into these a little bit, we saw our price go up just a touch. We're still under 600,000 home right here again random home that i clicked on to show you guys a good example of what you're going to find in the area they were at 598 they've dropped to 589 price reductions are not uncommon right now we're at 2700 square feet and this home worth noting does not have a basement let me touch on that just a little bit so basements in colorado are very very common almost all homes are going to have them however you have started to see some new home builders find that hey if we can knock 30 or 50 grand off the price and offer a home without a basement not everyone needs a basement. However, I will tell you they are very, very handy. And from a resale perspective, it is going to impact it a little bit. Your appreciation is going to be slightly limited if you don't have a basement, not by a ton, right? It is good to be able to keep things affordable for people. And again, not everyone uses a basement. So just worth noting here, as you're looking at these homes, if you find a home without one, it is going to be more affordable, but potentially you could be limited as far as resale value. All right, now coming back into it, let's check this house out. So we're at 2758 as far as square footage. We can see that it's got solar on it, which is nice. And this is a brand new build. All right, so this is not a resale. So it might look a little more plain than some of the other homes, but again, still nice quality finishes inside. Not a big backyard. It looks like you are pretty close to your neighbors over here. 
but it looks nice. Like not a bad home. Here on this side, it looks like they might be putting a home here, but it does look like there's a nice little park out there. You've got a nice big open loft area here on the top. Okay, and then back here, I know it is a wide angle lens, but it does look like you have a little bit more yard space. Let me click through. I wanna find one here in the reunion area that is more of a resale. Let's check this one out. Yeah, this is a 2021 build. We're at 575, they've dropped it from 590. Now we're at 3,100 square feet and an 800 square foot basement. Cute house, great curb appeal. As we dive into it again, what's nice on these resales, you see the updates like the light fixtures, the under cabinet lighting, things that you might not get direct from the builder that a homeowner's come in, they put their personal touches on, it looks much more like home. Now, I love this open layout down here where you've got you know living area, the kitchen, and the eating area for the kitchen. Nice kitchen island, beautiful finishes. Yeah, this home, this home shows really, really well. Cute little pantry here, let's keep clicking through. Nice, good sized primary bedroom, beautiful bathroom, loft area, which are super handy, especially if you have kiddos. You know, just some updates like the wood accents here on the wall. Again, you're not gonna find that from a builder. So personally, I love these resale homes because you get things like that. Yeah, this is an awesome home. Small-ish backyard, but it looks like they've made really good use of the space. And here is a good example of an unfinished basement. And obviously you can see they're using this, right? They have like TV down there. They've got all the workout equipment. This is what my basement would look like if it were unfinished, but tons of good options, a lot of good space down here. So now we're definitely starting to see guys some better updates in these homes. We're still under that $600,000 price point, great neighborhoods, beautiful homes and under 600,000. And this is going to be very, very close to Denver. Reunion is literally just outside of it. Here you're very close to 470s. Here we've got Reunion. 470 that I was just pointing out is going to take you all the way down past the airport, all the way around Southeast Aurora, all the way down the south side of the metro area through Highlands Ranch, and then ultimately all the way back up, passing through Morrison, which is where Red Rocks is, all the way up to I-70, which is where you're going to take out to go to the mountains if you're going out there. So I absolutely love anywhere that is close to 470 because again, you're using it to get to Denver quickly, you're using it to get to the airport quickly, or if you wanna go to the mountains, you don't need to go all the way down south like I just mentioned, but you would just take 470 down and you could get on I-70 and then take this all the way out west, or you could go on the north side, come down 76, join up with I-70 and you're headed out to the mountains. So even though you are are further out east here. You're by no means living in the plains. You can still see the mountains. There are the Rocky Mountains. They are plenty big and the highway proximity is still getting you anywhere you need to go quickly. Now let's keep working our way down here toward Aurora. You're going to find this area here. I'm going to stick to east of 470 right now where we've got this brand new community that's popping up here. This is called Aurora Highlands. So these are all going to be new builds. You probably won't see a ton of resales out here quite yet. Here we're sitting south of the airport. Now, guys, we've got a three-car garage, which is phenomenal. We're listed at 559, down from 606. However, this is just an 1,800 square foot home with no basement. I think most of this home is probably garage, but man, that might be the most important thing to a lot of you guys. Now, Aurora Highland, this is going to be a massive, massive development. They're still in the very early phases, but there are tons of parks. There's gonna be mixed use, commercial and residential there. You're gonna find a lot more happening out in this area. They have a lot of these art exhibits that are popping up throughout, which again, is just super cool. This is going to be a really, really, really cool spot in the future. Let me try and find a home here that has some good photos with it because they did not have any on those in the renderings. So let's take a look at like this one right here. All right, so here is a resale. This is 2021 build. We're listed at 565 down from 650. We're at 2300 square feet. And again, no basement here. We're on a corner lot, which I like. Let's click through and just take a look at a little bit here. Cool. So Nice home, decent updates in it. Definitely could use a few touches like we saw in the last home to really make it feel much more homey. But we have our open loft area. And again, this gives you guys a good idea of what 2,300 square feet is gonna feel like 
under 600 in this neighborhood and here they have the backyard landscaping done actually a pretty decent size backyard nice big porch this opens right up into your main living area and again we're at 565 here when it comes to colorado this is very 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 affordable now let's come back to our map here and what we're going to do we're going to come all the way down south a lot of these homes right here this is also new builds in aurora if we look at this one here this is in a neighborhood called traditions here now we've got 3,700 square feet. We're listed right at 600, a little bit older build at 2015, but we do have an 1,800 square foot basement here. So we've got a big three car garage and let's see. Yeah, good size home. You know, you can tell it's got that slightly older feel to it. Just have like some of the darker floors, maybe some older light fixtures, but nice big kitchen here. And, you know, it doesn't really need a whole ton of updates. Maybe you could come in here and do some like putting granite in the bathrooms and whatnot, but you've got a big finished basement. It looks like they have a couple bedrooms, a bathroom and a big entertainment area. This is gonna be very common for a configuration that you'll see in finished basements. And small-ish backyard, but that's just what you're gonna find in a lot of these, these Colorado homes. It is nice when you can find them in the back to open space because you don't have a whole ton to manage in the yard, but you get to look out and feel like it's a lot bigger than it is. But this is a big home, guys. This is at 3,700 square feet. And again, we're right at 600 and we're not too terribly old at 2015 built. Coming back here, we're gonna work our way down south here to one of our favorites, Castle Rock. We're going to see a good concentration here in the meadows. So the Meadows is one of the most popular neighborhoods that you're gonna find in Castle Rock for good reason too. It's a beautiful neighborhood. It sits on the west side of I-25, so you're closer to the mountains and you're very close to the highway. Even though Castle Rock, guys, is pretty far south on the map or it might feel far south, you're real close to I-25. So to get to Denver, you're jumping on the highway, you're heading straight north, and this is about a 35 to maybe 40 minute drive to downtown Denver, which is not terrible at all. If we are looking at under 600 here in the Meadows, it's probably going to be so like this home this is an attached home they're still calling it a single family home i don't know why they do that it's a duplex but you will find things like this this is listed at 600 but i want to take a look at a single family home that we have down here here's another duplex looking thing let's see here okay so we're seeing a lot of these duplexes here at the 500 mark let's see if we can't find a single family home so this is almost more like a patio home older home really not much of a yard you're part of this big community where everyone kind of has like these shared driveways this is that tri-level design they need to empty their trash can <laughs> Let's see, a little tight on the bottom. This almost looks like those first homes that we were looking at in Berthid when we first started off. What we found out about the Meadows, guys, is that if we're at that 600 mark, it is going to be like these more patio homes. You are kind of giving up the yard a little bit if we're trying to stay in that 600 mark, or you can get a nice duplex or townhome out here. Now, where we're really gonna start finding the value in Castle Rock is when we head further down south here into the Crystal Valley area. So Crystal Valley is gonna sit right next to Montaigne, which we've covered quite a bit on this channel. One of the things that draws people to Crystal Valley is that you do have these nice single family homes that are right around that 600 marks so you are going to find more affordability out there taking a look at this one right here originally set at 619 we're at 600 now we're at 2,000 square feet with no basement but you've got your yard you've got a two-car garage let's go through and take a look at the inside nice layout beautiful finishes i really like the the wood floors that they have there Yeah, it looks like a really nice, well cared for home. And again, this gets you into a really nice master plan community where you've got pools, you've got parks, you've got the clubhouses, all that good stuff, and actually a decent sized backyard here. Here's a picture of one of the parks that's down there. You've got the clubhouse and pool, really beautiful community, and all of this for an HOA of only $85 a month for Crystal Valley HOA. Guys, these are the primary areas that I wanted to show you. Let's recap this just a little bit before we're done. If we're looking at Berthid and Longmont here, I know we didn't dive into Longmont specifically, but you're gonna find a lot of the same styles of homes that you're gonna find in Berthid, maybe slightly older. Definitely older because you're not doing a whole ton of new builds in Longmont right now, especially when it comes to single family homes. If we're looking to stay closer to Denver, guys, I would really highly recommend this reunion area. 
especially if you're looking for newer homes, you're looking for master plan communities similar to Crystal Valley that we just mentioned. And if you're looking for, I would say the biggest community at the most affordable price, this Aurora Highlands area is going to be one that you should highly, highly focus on. Again, you're close to I-70, it's a quick drive over to Denver and you're getting a lot of bang for your buck out there with a lot of future growth potential. And then I would say if you guys are looking for the best nature when it comes to affordability and being in Colorado, then I don't think there is a better spot than down here in Castle Rock, even like this Crystal Valley area. Now also worth noting guys that today we were being real strict, staying under 600. If you were looking for a lot more options, if you just go up to that 650 price range, the doors are really gonna open up quite a bit. You're gonna see a lot more popping up all over the place as long as you are looking for a newer style of home. The hard part in Colorado guys gets to be when you're looking for affordability and proximity to the mountains. So the more Western you get into the state, prices are gonna go up. The home age is gonna go up as well. Again, you're not not going to find a whole lot of new builds out there on the western side so this is kind of the give and take right if you love new build homes we're going to be looking more on the south side or north or east side if you're really looking for the best affordability that's going to be up north and out east that's one of the reasons that we love castle rock as much as we do though because you're going to get a really really good bang for your buck as far as pricing and affordability but then you also have a lot of nature that comes towards you just being down in the castle rock side hopefully you guys like this video as you guys know we are licensed real estate brokers. And as much as we love making these videos, we love more to help you with your real estate needs. So if you call that number below, guys, we are the guys that answer the phone calls, text messages, and emails. We'd love to jump on a quick Zoom call with you, discuss your wants and needs. We're moving here to Colorado and come up with a perfect game plan for you, getting you out here to our beautiful state. Thank you for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.